Hey guys, hope you and your families are well. Weekly IBD 50 video sponsored by MarketSmith. If you're interested in a discounted MarketSmith trial, there is a link in the comments below. So we've got 20 stocks to be going through from the IBD 50 list from various industry groups. You can see the stocks that I'm going to be going through here and they are grouped together in terms of their industry groups. We're going to be starting off with three airline related stocks. Now, what is catching my attention with some of the airline stocks is some very big bases. So I like to see big bases because I'm a believer in the law of cause and effect. So bigger the cause, bigger the potential effect. So let's start off here with CPA. We'll come on to the technicals in a second, but what's catching my eye from a fundamental standpoint is take a look at the earnings coming through. You've got six quarters of triple digit earnings and then take a look at the sales as well, very high sales. And when you take a look at here in terms of the actual sales numbers, you've got 445 million, 575 million, 571 million, then you've got 693 million, and then going into the 800 plus million range. So nice to see the sales accelerating. What I think is then quite interesting as well is take a look at the 2023 earnings per share estimates. They are expected to be at 43% with the forward guidance up as well and kind of a breakout year in terms of uh, in terms of the earnings per share here obviously in 2020 2021 airlines were kind of shut down for obvious uh, for obvious reasons so then you have a big jump in 2022 but it's good to see the 2023 and 2024 numbers to be kind of all-time high earnings per share estimates for the last eight years or so so if you take a look at some of the prior valuations for this stock in particular so the company in 2017 which is a very good market for swing trading it was eight dollars 25 came in and the 52 week high for that year was 100 and 38 and you can see the current share price is sub 100 at the minute you can see in 2018 the earnings per share came in at six dollars 52 and the 52 high there was 141 dollars so what is then catching my attention and as, as i start thinking about it you're ticking many of the cancelling boxes here and relative to how the stock has been valued previously by the market and i'm no fundamentalist i'm no value guy i focus much more of my attention in terms of the technicals but i do like to see a lot of those a lot of those can a lot of those cancelling characteristics being ticked and preferably strong stock in a strong Strong industry group, but this here could have a way, a way to go. Maybe. 40% from here, uh, 40-50% if it's going to go back to these previous valuations and the earnings per share estimates are even higher. So that's interesting when you then think about the technicals as well in terms of this potential large base, large cause playing out. So we'll see what the effect, what I do like here for this stock specifically is take a look at these RS lines versus the market versus the stocks and entry group. So the blue line is versus the market. The green line is versus the stocks and entry group. So really good to see both both of those RS lines looking strong. Now on a short term basis, a little a little bit extended here. So I'm very specific in terms of what what it is <coughs> what it is I'm looking for for an actual breakout breakout setup. And you can see various other various other videos on the uh, on the channel. So without going really really into the details in each stock, otherwise this video will be a couple of, a couple of hours long. I will uh, keep it keep it fairly fairly swift, but I'll pull a couple of them up on the uh, on the daily chart. United Airlines, another one. Take a look at the earnings coming through and the estimates. So estimates up 226 percent with the forward guidance up. You got last three quarters of triple digit earnings coming through, sales accelerating as well. So really strong to see and potentially a decent size cause building here. See, I have a really good week in terms of the reaction to the earnings and see how it is tightening up here. Let me get down to the daily chart on this one. Why not? I'll make a, I'll do a combination between the uh, between the daily and also the uh, also the weekly for some of them. So this green line here there's the 21 EMA and the pinkish line there is the 10 EMA and then this red line here is the 50 and then this black line here is the 200. So this could actually set up a low a low pivot maybe around $50 in the low in the low $50 around around the 10 and 21 EMA. So maybe it just kind of bounces a little higher low in here tightens up nicely and then for a low pivot to develop. But then you can see how you could then have remember the context of that large weekly base. You could then also have here on the daily cup and handle really nice price action. Okay, a couple of weeks ago, look at the consistency of demand on this rally here. Really, really, really good to uh, to see. So another one in terms of airlines that I'm looking at is Ryanair. So you can see how this stock here breaking out of this decent size base. You actually get some cup and not a cup and handle. We do have some cup and handle, but you could also look at it head and shoulders bottoming type pattern. So the left shoulder here, this is the head over here. Then it builds out the right shoulder over here, and then take a look at the bullish synchronicity. Just that consistency of demand coming through. Stocks now pulling into the 1021 EMA can potentially set up a low pivot in the high in the high 90s something like that maybe 96 97 dollars something around there but that there looks uh, interesting as well good earnings good sales so on and so forth now going into some retail internet so there's two and Meli. this is like the amazon of south america if you like and then i'm going to show you ptd which is more chinese focus so what i think is interesting with Meli here 
Okay, it has a history of being able to run okay. And then if we take a look here, 2022, take a look at the earnings per share estimates coming through. This is $8, which is huge relative to the prior, prior, prior eight years or so. So up at 428% with the guidance up as well. That was for 2022, sorry, 2023, plus 67% with the guidance up as well. Good earnings, good sales coming through. You've got some higher quality growth funds increasing their position in recent quarters as well. So on the, when we get on to the daily chart here, See how it's trying to come out of this very large base. Take a look at the volume coming through in here. This is fantastic to see and see how it's now potentially setting up around the 1021 EMA for a low pivot. So keeping my eye on this one to tighten up around the 1021 EMA, trigger bar, volume dry up, continue to dry up as it currently is. That there could look very, very interesting. So Melly, kind of think about that Amazon South America. That's one that I'm keeping a uh, keeping a close eye on. PDD, this is Chinese related name. So it's coming out potentially of a very large phase one base. Take a look at these volume footprints you get towards the bottom of the base. Now see how that volume's drying up. Now China has been choppy of late. I look at KWeb mainly. So it's been it's been choppy, it's been difficult of late, but PDD is showing some relative strength. And see this red line here? This is the 50 SMA. So it could potentially be forming a low pivot around $100, high 90s, around the 1021 and 50 SMA. So just looking for price to continue to tighten in there and it's putting in these structural high lows generally speaking so keep an eye on a low pivot to form in PBD, pdd as i am other chinese related names abg so this one here is interesting now short term a little bit extended but it has had a very positive reaction to the most recent earnings take a look at this volume through coming through as well on that final candle second prior one see so yeah, it kind of builds a low pivot around the 10 email but what i think is interesting here this is retail hold, wholesale automobile is take a look at the size of this base so this is the causality point as well right law of cause and effect see how you're building a very large base in here and take a look at these rs lines both versus the market both, both versus the stocks and industry groups got an rs i drew that arrow badly didn't i Got an RS rating of 94, consistent earnings, consistent sales coming through, earnings per share growth rate, three to five year look back, 46%, ROE, 30, 33%, nice volume coming through on the earnings week as well. So it's coming out of this large base. So looking for it to build that kind of phase two continuation type pattern. So VCP, Darvis box, flag cup and handle so on and so forth so for a stock like this it's going to be a bit of a slower mover i would like to see the 21 ema catch up but if that can happen in a couple of weeks could look like an interesting one next one here well, the next two are going to be are going to be healthcare related so the first one is medical products related which is inspire medical systems let me just show you this so similar to a to abg if you go onto the weekly chart here the stock has built potentially a very large base in here now healthcare stocks are a little bit a little bit of this a little bit of that some of them are acting well some of the some of them are fairly weak but this stock here take a look at the rs lines versus the market versus the stock zone industry group little kind of negative on this one is you have had some higher quality growth funds there's five invested two of which have been decreasing in their position albeit kind of marginally certainly Invesco discovery um, very marginal decrease there so I don't know how much I would read into that bond but what I do think is interesting is the most recently reported quarter was the first time the company reported being profitable in a long time take a look at the sales increasing as well so in the last seven quarters well eight quarters they've gone from 50 million 53 million up to 137 million and that looks like pretty much sequential growth in every quarter bar one which was in March 2022 so really interesting there relatively new in terms of of its IPO relative strength given the context of this bear market I think is uh, very very interesting indeed so on the daily chart a little bit kind of choppy but could see how a cup and handle kind of builds here but it's it's fairly choppy one so it's one I want to be watching and uh, kind of monitoring but you do have the 10 in there the 21 which is the green line and also the 50 being the red line so it's one I just need to just need to watch and watch and kind of wait how a potential pivot um, develops it but certainly an interesting one both technically both fundamentally so a biotech stock some of the biotechs are uh, kind of trying to go other ones are building pivots coming back down other ones are just flat out just being destroyed um around around pivots as well so biotechs are not an easy area of the market they never really are an easy area of the market but what i think is interesting here with rvnc is it's one of the strongest biotechs you can see that in terms of the rs line versus the market versus the group as well which is the uh which is the green line in here not the 21 ema albeit it has just bounced nicely off the 21 ema what i like is high quality girlfriend wells fargo growth initiated a position in q 
added in Q4. Okay, great to see sequential growth in the quarter over quarter fund ownership for the last three quarters. Okay, good. Can it now create a low pivot around the 1021 EMA? So maybe somewhere around 33, 34, maybe $35. That, that, that kind of vicinity is what I'm looking at. So get nice and tight in here. Trigger bars come in, inside bars, volume dry up below the 30 bar, 30 bar average. That is what I would be looking for. So something like this, but that volume to now just really dry up tightness in price that there could look fairly interesting now going to a completely different area of the market is gww so this is machinery and tool so you have fidelity contra fund in there initiated in q3 added in q4 again you're commonly going to see that especially in some of these bigger these bigger funds such such as a fidelity but what in my experience is it's rare they buy their whole position in a single quarter they are building it over subsequent quarters so a really positive reaction to the most recent earnings report so that's great to see look at the volume coming through now clearly short term the stock is extended so i I would like to see a base now now form could be a flag vcp maybe a Davis box something like that but at a minimum i would like to see the 10 catch up but more so ideally the 21 catches up in here as well so this stock's on my radar but at a minimum it's probably probably a week away if not a little bit longer away for me just to see that that kind of tighten up but steady eddy in terms of the earnings per share growth rate year over year institutions love that so I think it is. Uh, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be an interesting one. And you can see over the last eight quarters, you've had the fund ownership in terms of the institutional fund ownership growing quarter over quarter. So they really love it when there's just that consistent growth in terms of the earnings share year over year. Now going to a completely different area of the market. Sounds a little bit more like Monty Python, doesn't it? But Uber. So I think Uber is really, really, really interesting over the next ten years or so, especially when you start thinking about a new growth area, which is going to be TAS. So you may have heard of SaaS, which is software as a service, software as a service. A TAS is transport as a service. So think about autonomous taxi vehicles. It is going to be very, very interesting. Uber could be there. I think Tesla is going to be there um, as as well, but it's going to be uh, going to be interesting. Fidelity in there in Q4, initiating a position. Remember what I just said. It is more. It's more common to see the likes of a Fidelity initiate and then be adding in in subsequent quarters rather than just they buy they buy their whole position in the uh, in a single quarter. Obviously, they just have so much money under under management as well, and they kind of invest somewhat in a contrarian fashion to how we are probably uh, probably trend. So what I like about Uber here is let's just bring out the weekly chart. So it's relatively new in terms of the in terms of the IPO in 2019 obviously COVID maybe that's going to happen again in our lifetimes kind of a market a market event like that maybe not and then obviously you run into the bear market which for growth stocks really start in q1 of two of 2021 so it's been a bear market in growth for around about around about two years but what i like here so here, here's the bear market what i then like take a look at some of these volume clues coming through see these footprints in here interesting right and then certainly in here as well now trying to power out of this phase one base quite successfully so well, let's now bring this over Sales growth has been fantastic, by the way, on uh, on Uber. So take a look at the volume footprints in here. Take a look at it here. Take a look at it in here as well. So what I'd be looking at here is for a pivot to form. Now, the stock on a short-term basis for me is somewhat extended here. I would like to see an orderly pullback, ideally to the ideally to the 21 EMA. So just kind of pull back in here, build some higher lows, tighten up, something like this. The 21 just catches up like that and then could build out a very nice flag. But in the context of coming out of this much, much larger phase one accumulation base so uber i think is very interesting a very liquid stock as well now let's go into some semiconductor so semiconductors if i just show you the semiconductor etf which is smh so what i like here is head and shoulders bottoming type pattern and it's showing relative strength see this the blue line here pay attention to the blue line see how that blue line is turning up versus the s p 500 so it's good to see semiconductors showing relative strength so you get the head so left shoulder head and then the right shoulder over here and then breaking out of the quasi neckline through here. So it's pulling back in. It's a fairly orderly pullback, okay? Price is gonna pull back in the context of an uptrend, but at the minute, I'm not seeing many obvious signs of distribution. You get some nice volume footprints and the preceding rally coming through. And then in terms of this pullback at the minute, it's finding supportive action on the 21 EMA, which is good. And I'm not seeing huge volume on that pullback either, nor am I seeing overly bearish candlestick. So I think this is a constructive basing action for SMH, which is the large semiconductor ETF. Then when I start dialing in and looking at individual semiconductor stocks, these are some of the ones that are catching my attention. So this is SCHP. So decent size base potentially building here. So it's the causality point. Take a look at the RS line versus the market versus the group as well consistent in terms of the earnings, terms of the sales. Remember what I was saying about institutions loving earnings per share, year of year growth. Historically, semiconductors, you go and look back at the market over the last 
20 years, even even longer than that. You think about some of the stocks that have made some really big runs in RMPS, a Qualcomm more recently, you think about the NVIDIAs, the AMDs of the world as well. So I think there are, is going to be new leadership in terms of uh, in terms of semiconductors. I'll come on to another one which isn't in this list, but I'll give you give you a little bonus one. So short term, a little, little bit extended here, but maybe it can find support of action on the 21 EMA and bouncer. These are the ones in the S and not the S&P 500. These are the ones in the IBD at 50 that are just catching my attention. One that's not on this list, but a semiconductor I would be keeping an eye on is GFS. So relatively new in terms of its IPO. You can see it IPOs here and you see how it didn't get absolutely obliterated in this in this bear market, but it's got good earnings, good sales, good after tax margins as well. Now short term extended did have a positive reaction <clears throat> to the most recent earnings report, which were seven plus seven hundred percent on the earnings per share and now can it set a pivot around $70 low low $70 would like to see the 21 EMA pack play catch up and potentially a cup and handle type pattern to build in here but GFS it isn't it isn't on the IBD 50 list at the minute I'm sure it may be soon um, it's probably on the on the great on the growth to 50 list to be fair but GFS is one one to be looking at as well but let's go back into semiconductors on the IBD 50 list so this is ADI so short term extended here, but again, it's similar to the prior one, which is which is MCHP on that IBD 50 list. See how it's building a large base here. It's near 52 week highs, actually breaking. Well, it's over 52 week highs, but breaking into into local local all time high territory. When you look at this chart, take a look at these RS lines turning up. So strong versus the market, strong versus the industry group, strong versus that SMH. Remember that SMH semiconductor ETF. Only share ticking up, earnings there, sales there. Yeah, just looks strong, strong, strong stock, but it needs to set up as my buy criteria. So I'll be a little bit quicker <clears throat> on some of these. This is another one, MPWR, strong. Take a look at these RS lines. Some higher quality growth funds initiating positions and adding to positions recently. Some decreasing their positions as well. So a little bit of this, a little bit of that on, uh, on the high quality fund ownership standpoint. Earnings look good. Sales look good. Estimates look good. Earn share year over year, ticking up. ROE, 41%. Earnings share growth rate on a three to five year look back 31 percent great and then potentially building this large base that has been showing relative strength so clearly short term extended here but if this can tighten up and meets my criteria that there could look interesting a new one which is mply so this one here is interesting when you then think about um ai as well so ai vehicles this one here is a mobile eye so in terms of a recent ipo it didn't get obliterated actually it acts really really well take a look at the earnings take a look at the sales coming through drill it down onto the daily chart short term clearly extend it's it's extended here for me i need to see a proper proper base being built out but this stock here because of the strength because it's semiconductors because of the earnings the sales off tax margins those cancelling criteria as well the liquidity of the stock's okay it's not it's not too bad as well market cap is around about 33 billion the rs lines this is one if it can set up a pivot point for me that there could look very interesting indeed some other tech related ones. So this one here, this is a net. So I'm going to go into the weekly chart for this stock. So take a look at these RS lines. See what I mean about fidelity here in terms of adding to positions in subsequent quarters. That's more commonly common to uh, to see them do. You do have one high quality growth fund, artisan mid cap investor decreasing their position in the prior two quarters. Take a look at the consistency of the earnings of the sales as well. Really, really strong. And then a decent sized base, a very big base building here. See how it's been building high low. So you could look at this as some VCP type action, one contraction, two contraction, three Three contraction clearly short-term extended but another one that is strong on the IBD 50 list that I'm keeping an eye on this one here super micro computer SSMCI so smaller smaller market cap just under 5 billion but take a look at this RS line here versus the market versus stock zone inch group high high sales coming through and high earnings as well you got four quarters of triple digit earnings sales look high as well 41 51 53 79 54 looks pretty good breakout year 2023 of $10.37 for the earnings per share so that's a big breakout year in terms of uh, in terms of prior years so yeah, it's a dollar fifty dollar fifty two dollars fifty two seventy seven and then $2.48 and then $2,022, $5.65 and then big breakout year to $10.37. So that looks very interesting. Then take a look at some of the prior 52-week highs um, as well. So we'll see. Interesting one showing relative strength, no doubt. Now this stock here is pretty, pretty choppy at the minute. So I'm looking at this as a potential cup. This could be a potential cup, but now I'd need to see the handle tighten up, uh, preferably around the 10, 21 EMA. And it does something like this in coming weeks. So it tightens up. I'd like to see that volume come down as well, but huge earnings coming through potentially a strong stock then going on to a software security related stock this one here is ftnt you've got some other ones as well uh, pano alto is a very very similar very similar stock in terms of how they move and then what's a crowd strike doing at the minute as uh, as well crowd strike nowhere near as strong as technically as strong as uh, as these ones here so ftnt 
has a history of being able to run okay as well. You can see some of these prior runs this stock has been able to go on. RS9 is now starting to turn up, especially versus the Toxone Industry Group. Fidelity decreased their position, then have added in the most recently reported two quarters and potentially building a large base here, breaking this down with sloping trend line. So it looks interesting kind of breaking out of this falling wedge type pattern take a look at the volume coming through as well just needs to just needs to tighten up there on the daily chart but that's an interesting one and then going into some computer software enterprise related stocks so this is monday.com you've probably seen a lot of their a lot of their youtube ads but the company has been able to go profitable for the first time since uh, since since its IPO, and you can see it goes further back than that as well. But nice to see the company going profitable. So triple digit earnings for the last two quarters. Take a look at the sales revving up. So it looks like sequential growth, just eyeballing it. 59, 70, 83, 95, 108, 123, 136, 149. So really good to see the consistency of the sales growth, both on a year over year basis, but also on a quarter over quarter basis as well. So as I said, the bear market really started for growth stocks around about was well, a little bit earlier than that actually it was around about here monday.com actually built an ipo base and then uh, and then then tried to run then it rolls over so phase four decline into so kind of price cycling it potential phase one base now trying to come out potentially into a stage structure and we'll see tony road price new horizons decrease their position and adding to their uh, to their position so that there is an interesting one but as i said price cycle wise potentially trying to come out of a um of a decent decent size phase one accumulation base stock is okay in terms of the liquidity as well so here's that base take a look at some of the volume footprints that you're seeing down here within the base so just watching and waiting for this one to build out build out build out a nice pivot potentially um, but interesting to see stocks like a monday.com like an uber some other ones that have been relatively new in terms of their ipos trying to come out of these phase one bases so that is interesting another one potentially coming out of a phase one base is iot so you can see the stock ipos here comes down and now you can start to see a bit of vcp type action building structural high lows you've got three higher quality growth funds fidelity initiating a position invesco discovery adding to a position and harbor adding to their position as well so take a look how this is trying to come out of this potential phase one base now what i would like to see is a pivot form around the 10 and 21 ema when they cluster in like that so maybe around 15 16 dollars but this stock here very strong versus the market and its groups see how these rs lines are turning up earnings are due at the time of filming in 11 days so maybe it kind of tightens up into that so it tightens up into that and potentially earnings is the actual uh, catalyst for it to break out i don't know whether it's going to do that but we'll see right and then finally let's go to somewhere completely different building hand tool so this one here is toro so let's just take a look at it on the weekly chart you've got tony Rowe, new horizons adding to their position in the prior two quarters potentially a very deep cup and handle type pattern but you could also just look at the handle here as kind of a davis box flag type pattern nice shake out on the weekly chart um too fairly consistent in terms of the earnings per share the earnings coming through the sales growth as um as well as that institutions invariably love that kind of stuff so what i'm looking at here it's potentially a big shakeout and then can the stock set up around the 10 21 and 50 so you see how you have a nice clustering at the minute that's a little bit hard to see but in here you got the 10 21 and 50 so maybe it can form a low pivot around 115 116 something something around that level but if it can potentially form a low pivot really like that shakeout and then it's starting to build these higher lows in here so maybe it kind of pulls back down to 110 bounces higher lows so on and so forth but an interesting one and a higher quality growth fund adding so that's it guys i will wrap it up there remember if you're interested in a discount to trial of market smith there is a link in the comments below thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in a future video